Australia, home of the possum, cool surfer dudes, strange lingo, now worries mate, fair dinkum, lots of sunshine and the Bonza Barrier Reef. It's the biggest, most spectacular coral reef in the world, and what's more, every creature is linked to another. Just imagine one huge family tree dating back 18 million years. From the minuscule to the mammoth to the miraculous, they're all connected in Barney's Barrier Reef. Imagine living in one great big food hall, where food is round every corner. Thank you. Where you can eat out all day, every day. Thank you. The reef feeds on itself 24 hours a day, from veggies to meat, solitary diners to pack hunters. All sea creatures hungrily line up for this ocean banquet. It is one nosh-tastic place. Mm, lovely. Food. Glorious food. Nice. In Barney's Barrier Reef. Whoop. 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 These are corals, the big daddies of the reef, trying to feed their sun addiction. Ah, yes, corals are strange. <laughs> they're animals, but they feed mainly using the sun, like plants, don't they? They do, and they're helped out by their little friend, the zooxanthellae. Zo thingy what now? OK, here's the science bit. Listen and learn. Zooxanthellae are tiny plants. Ah, OK, but how tiny, Dr Barnacles? Very tiny, Gemma. In fact, there are one million zooxanthellae per square centimetre of coral tissue. That's about the size of your fingernail. Wow, that's ridiculously tiny. Zooxanthellae take in energy from the sun Yummy. and convert the sunlight into sugars, which the corals absorb. Oh, so that's why these big boy corals stretch out like tourists on an overcrowded beach. Wow, that's some monster coral. Yeah, that one's table coral. Corals are surprisingly competitive, always pushing each other out of the way, trying to get the best sunspot. Ooh, these white ones are weird. Yeah, these poor corals are ill. Ugh. They're suffering from something called coral bleaching because the water got too warm for the zooxanthellae to stay inside the coral tissue. As Dr Barnacles was saying, they need the zooxanthellae to grow and be healthy. Hang on, if they need sunlight to eat, then what do they do at night? Ah, well, at night, the corals turn into meat eaters. They use their tentacles to sting tiny passing animals before gobbling them up. Weird. So they're like meat eaters at night and sanitarians during the day. <laughs> so who's our next ocean nosher? <laughs> Wow, now that is a clam. A bit bigger than the ones you see in Brighton. Well, that's because they're giant clams. Giant clams! <laughs> you could disappear in that big boy. Well, almost. They can weigh up to 227 kilograms. Wow, that's like two and a half Barneys and a Gemma. Clams also feed using those zoos and what's it's? It's called zooxanthellae. OK, I'm going to call them zoos. They're also competing to get the best spot in the sun so that their zoos can feed them through their skin. But just in case they miss out on any passing nosh, they also feed on small animals and plants known as plankton. Ah, OK, like little ocean snacks. Yeah, kind of. And they do this by passing water through one hole and out through their siphon hole. So they eat through their skin and also through a separate hole. That's well greedy. Well, I guess it is, but that's why they're giant clams and why they live for over 70 years. <coughs> <laughs> Maybe the secret to a long life is sunlight and plankton. So corals should live for ages too, then? Yep, corals and clams are linked because they both eat lots and lots through sunlight and their pals, the zooxanthellae. <laughs> that is a giant batfish. They may look like bats swimming through the water, but they're actually called manta rays. Good morning. Well, they swim quite gracefully, these manta rays, don't they? They're also one of the biggest animals in the ocean. They can grow up to seven and a half metres. Wow, that's big. That's four and a bit barnies. One, two, three, four, bit. 
My manta, what a big mouth you have. All the better to eat, eat and eat. In fact, they're constantly eating. Their wide mouth filters as much water as possible. But can't see them actually eating anything. Those fish got away lightly. Well, this is weird. They're the biggest of all the ray family and one of the biggest animals in the ocean. But they eat the smallest animals. What? Well, they eat plankton, which is roughly, get this, a billion times smaller than the size of an average manta ray. A billion? That is weird. That'd be like me eating sesame seeds to survive. <laughs> How come they're so big, then? Well, they eat loads and loads and loads, and those flaps at the side are designed to funnel the water into their mouths so they can just filter the plankton out. So they may look like amazing animals, but they're basically just eating machines. Nice life, eh? Clams and manta rays both have a huge appetite for plankton, those titchy tiny ocean nibbles. And weirdly, they both grow massive and live a long old life. So, plankton connects the clam and manta ray. <laughs> Spotty whale. Well, the appearance of said mammal may suggest whale, but I'd like to introduce the whale shark. Is it a whale or a shark? Please enlighten me, Dr Barnacles. It is, in fact, a shark that has been named a whale shark because although it may look like a whale, it is actually a shark. And rather confusingly, despite being a shark, it actually has the personality of a whale. The personality of a whale? What is that exactly? I'll take over now, Dr Barnacles. Right you are. Whale sharks are pretty chilled animals. They're quite shy and rarely come to the surface, and when they do, it's mainly to eat. So, what do they eat? Turtles? Fish? Uh, humans? No, 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 no. These guys are gentle giants. And like the manta ray, they eat plankton. This plankton stuff must be really good. Mm. If you thought the manta eating plankton was weird, then this is triply weird. Whale sharks are huge. They can grow up to 20 metres long and weigh 34 tonnes. They even have bigger mouths than the manta ray. Whoa, 34 tonnes? That's as big as a massive truck. And they eat something microscopic. I know, and their spots are unique to each animal, a bit like the whale shark version of fingerprints. If you had an ocean lineup, each one could be identified separately. Uh, excuse me? Manta rays and whale sharks are the biggest eaters in their class. The manta eats the most in the ray family, and the whale shark in the shark family. So they're connected because they're both gigantic plankton gobblers. <laughs> From the biggest gobs to the smallest tutors. Butterfly fish may look all colourful and cute, but they're more than just a pretty fish face. When it comes to eating, they're up there with the greediest gobs, as their little pipe mouth allows them to suck up the tastiest snack in the reef, the coral polyps. Mm. Polyps are like the caviar of the reef, even if they do look a little, um, strange. Like an upside-down jellyfish living in a teacup with its mouth at the top, surrounded by tentacles. And what's more, the butterfly fish pretty much have the polyps all to themselves, as other fish with their bigger mouths can't get into them. And their bristly toothbrush-like teeth allow them to get right into the juicy bit. They also eat parasites, those nasty bloodsucker things that cause fish to be ill. So they have a taste for caviar and parasites. Lucky for the fish, eh? Uh, not so lucky for the caviar polyps. It's no wonder some butterfly fish live to be 35 years old. Wow, 35 years old. That's long in fish years. Probably like us living to be something like, I don't know, 400 years old. And they're called butterfly fish because they flutter around the coral looking for juicy polyps. A bit like butterflies fluttering around flowers feeding on tasty nectar. And they may have the smallest chops in the ocean, but they're just as greedy as our giant chompers, the whale sharks. So, who's our next ocean nosher? <laughs> it's the amazing swimming fish display. And to the left and to the right. Now, these little fellas are called plankton-eating tuna. They're putting on a delightful display for us here. It's a bit like line dancing or those airplane displays. And their talents don't stop there. If only Simon Cowell could see them, he'd sign them up on the spot. 
actually, they may look like they're putting on a talent show, but they're opening their mouths wide to eat as much as possible. Ah, so we have another greedy guzzler. Yep, they catch their plankton using formation dancing. Plankton again? I feel like I'm missing out. Yep, plankton. It's their way of driving as much plankton as possible into their rather large plankton guzzling gobs. Ah, crafty. So, the whale shark and plankton eat in Tudor must be linked by their big appetite, surely. They are connected by their big gobs. So, there's plenty of tasty stuff to eat in the ocean. If you like plankton, that is. From the so damn thingamajigs to performing tuna. Let's run through our connections so far. First up, our crowding coral use the zooxanthellies to convert the sun's energy into sugar. Oh, yeah. Good. To give the coral their daily food fix. Like the giant carnivorous clams who use the zoos as well, but also have a taste for plankton. The mysteriously tasty plankton also feeds the massive mouths of the manta and the strange but true whale shark. From the largest mouths to the smallest with the coral guzzling butterfly fish. <laughs> like the singing and dancing plankton eating tuna, who make a meal out of getting their dose of dinner. So, who's our next ocean chomper? <laughs> Ah, oh, meet the fairy basslets. Wow, it's like a reef aquarium. Ah, funny you should say that, because the fairy basslets are like the goldfish of the reef. Very common, but also very pretty, and they come in lots of different colours. Not to mention there are loads of them. Well, that's because they hang out in schools, and most of them are female. All basslets are born female and turn into a male later in life. Cool, they get the best of both worlds. Hmm, if you say so. The males are purple and the females are orange. But they don't look the greedy type, they're tiny. Well, these guys, or gals, should I say, are team feeders. They form a wall of mouths so they can gulp up the plankton as it passes. You're kidding. They eat plankton? I'd never have guessed. Ha <laughs> ha It's amazing how so many species depend on a food that's basically microscopic. The plankton-eating tuna and fairy basslet fish both eat the apparently delicious ocean plankton. <laughs> Oh, look, it's like a fish lightsaber. Oh, cool, now it's raining fish. This is a silver side bait fish ball. Loads and loads of little fish that move in sync, making flashes of light. They get together to nosh on plankton. Wow, all that caused by fish half the length of a pencil. <laughs> yeah, their silver colour and super fast swimming create these amazing silver flashes and patterns when they swim together. And more importantly, help to confuse their predators. Who are? The mackerel mob. Well, they'll never catch the baitfish ball. They look like they can swim faster than the speed of light. Ah, see, that's where you're wrong, Barney. Mackerel are some of the fastest fish in the ocean. In fact, they can swim between 5 and 18 body lengths per second in short bursts. That's like a person swimming 100 metres in 5.5 seconds, eight times faster than the fastest Olympic record. Wow, now that is like super-powered swimming. Well, mackerel need this super swimming skill to catch their food and escape their predators. Like the baitfish, their silvery bodies and super speed help prevent them becoming dinner for hungry whales or sharks. So, let me get this straight. The plankton is being eaten by the baitfish, the baitfish is eaten by the mackerel, and the mackerel has to keep an eye out for a shark. Yep, and all in the same part of the ocean. It's kind of like they all dine at the same restaurant, but off different menus. One eats the food, and the other eats the other diners. So the connection between fairy basslets and mackerel is that the wall of mouths is their favourite place to dine. They just feed on different dishes. Enough of the wall of mouths. Who else links to our fairy basslets? <laughs> Try and guess the name of this next fish, Barney. I don't think you'll get it. Pink wobblefish. Nope. Rocking pink fish. OK, I'll give you a clue. <laughs> ah, rhinoceros fish. Ah, very close. These are rhinopius fish. I can see the resemblance now, well, on the snout anyway, although I, for one, have never seen a pink rhino gem. I think you may be wondering what those bluey-green fish taste like. Dream on, mate. You'll have to move faster than that to catch one of those little fish. <laughs> Whoa, how did he do that? Mm -hmm. Ah, so his rocking was just a ploy. Well, kind of. The jaw of a rhinopius is hinged. It folds in nicely when their mouths are closed, but can be thrown a long way from their body, uh. allowing them to suck up the fish. <laughs> oh, I think he may have indigestion. Oh, his eyes are bigger than his belly, that's for sure. I think he might have a fish in his throat, like a frog in his throat, but it's a fish. Definitely time to move on. So, 
Here, the rhinopius is a suction sucker. They use their jaws to suck in their food, just like the fairy basslets. Even if they can't fit their meal in their mouth. So, suction links the fairy basslets and rhinopius fish. Ah, oh, two little cardinal fish playing in the reef. Uh, one little cardinal fish wondering how to escape. Let me introduce the stupendous swallowing stonefish. He's not the best looking fish in the reef, or really the fastest, but he does have one specialist skill. Uh -oh. He's a crafty dude, all right. He lies in wait and gobbles up unsuspecting fish. Mm. Yep, he's known as a sit and wait predator. He settles down next to a rock. Or stone. He's a stonefish after all. Yeah, and who would ever know he was there? Even his eyes are camouflaged. Yeah, he has those telescope eyes at the top of his head, so he can also bury himself in the sand, knowing it's only a matter of time before he gets fed. He's so quick, they haven't got a chance. Well, when it comes to eating, Stoney here is super fast, but the uh. rest of the time he hardly moves at all. And when he does, well, it's not exactly streamlined. So how do they manage to move so fast when it's time for lunch? They have amazing suction power on their massive mouths, so their chances of missing are pretty slim. So he gets to eat what he wants, when he wants, thanks to his stone-like looks and super such a mouth. Absolutely, he's a stealthy hunter who doesn't have to move far to grab a bite to eat. A bit like the rhinopius who can dine on whoever he wants. So our rhinopius is linked to our stealthy stonefish because they both have expandable jaws. Cool, who's next? <laughs> My grandma, what wonderful, deadly, venomous locks you have. All the better to sting you with, my dear. Sharks, crocs, sea snakes, even that spearing cone shell. I can handle those guys, but this geezer, I cannot. <laughs> yep, the box jellyfish. It would only take one of his 5,000 million stinging cells to lay you out. Uh-oh. Imagine if you got wrapped in those tentacles. Uh, what kind of animal? Let's everyone see what he's eating. Ew. It's not that he wants us to see it eating breakfast. Goodbye. But a box jellyfish is see-through because that's the best way of sneaking up on their food without being noticed. The fish goes into its mouth, then to the stomach, where it's, um, processed. Ew. What do you mean, processed? Well, it breaks down the food into a kind of half-eaten broth, which it then sends down to the tentacles where it finishes digesting it. <gasps> Ew! Trust the box jelly. Now, most animals, including us, of course, use their stomach to digest, not this geezer. It's no wonder he has such long, flowing, venomous tentacle locks, then. The stonefish and box jelly are linked because they stealthily hunt down their favourite foods. <laughs> Oh, I like these. Some of the best lookers in the ocean. They're bright, colourful and graceful, like pretty flowers blowing in the breeze. Yeah, well, actually, they're not flowers at all. They're called anemones, and they're living animals who set up camp on coral and rock. <laughs> ah, they may look pretty at first glance, but this character is an extreme anemone. You certainly wouldn't want to sniff this pretty flower. Its tentacles are filled with deadly venom. As this blue fish is about to find out. These gluttons hardly move. Well, they don't have to. They stop passing fish in their tracks with their pretty but deadly tentacles. The fish gets swallowed whole. Now you see it, and now you don't. Oh no! And what's more, an anemone's mouth doubles up as a bottom. So they eat prey whole through their hole. <laughs> hole through their hole. <laughs> Get it? They're real greedy bloaters. They sit there all day and gobble up whatever floats past. Fish, or if they fancy a light snack, they nibble on plankton and little tiddlers. So the anemones are not fussy eaters. They'll demolish anything through their bottom. <laughs> it's another case of venomous tentacles. The box jelly and anemone are connected because they bring home fresh fish for tea thanks to their venomous tentacles. Food, glorious food. It's time for a recap. The wall-feeding, plankton-chomping fairy basslets are linked to our rhinopius, as both of them use suction to suck up their food. Mackerel are also linked to fairy basslets because they all eat in the same ocean diner, but just on different menus. The rhinopius is linked to stonefish through their expandable jaws. Our stealthy stonefish are linked to the box jelly through their sly hunting style. Ow! And the creepy box jelly is linked to the anemone as they both like to oh, fish no. fish with their tentacles. <laughs> Ah, 
Ah, look at this little shrimp. How cute is he? He's called the Harlequin Shrimp, but I call him Jeff the Court Jester Shrimp, with his funny outfit and body shape. Ah, and he's playing with the starfish. Um, I don't think he's playing, Jen. He's actually eating the starfish. No, don't be ridiculous. A shrimp can't eat a starfish. I mean, look how big it is. Ah, you see, now it's your turn to learn not to judge by appearances. Mr Cutie Pie Shrimp here is a complete starfish killer. Ooh, hasn't he bitten off a bit more than he can chew? Quite literally. No, he can handle this starfish, even though it's three times his size. Their little pink armoured legs are like sharp scissors or needles designed to unpick the starfish. It's a bit like unpicking thread or wool. Whoa, look at him go. He really has that down to a fine art. I'm beginning to feel sorry for the starfish. I mean, to be eaten is bad enough, but to be eaten by something three times smaller than you is practically humiliating. I know. It would be like me eating a small cow on my own. He obviously can't eat the starfish all at once, so he has a little trick up his sleeve that will help his lunch stay fresh for longer. Go on. Well, he doesn't kill the sea star. He just nibbles at it so it stays alive, sometimes for weeks. Oh, man, he's eating him while the dude is alive. That's like super-duper gross burger. Although the starfish doesn't seem too bothered by the fact the shrimp is picking him to bits. Well, there you go. Nothing like a fresh seafood meal for weeks on end. The Harlequin Shrimp. Or Super Duper Gross Burger Shrimp. Eats something three times his size, and the anemone eats fish and anything else it can gobble up. So the link between the shrimp and the anemone is monster appetite. Correct. OK, who's next? <laughs> Hey, it's an ocean hedgehog, but not as exciting. You always seem to think slow means dull, Barney. Not necessarily true. Yes, true. Slow, dull, fast fun. Exterminate! Exterminate! Look, he's a Dalek. I love that kind of stuff. Cut! No! Oh, man. As ever, there's a lot more to this spiky creature than meets the eye. He may look like just a ball of spikes, but each one has a purpose. What, well, other than being just pointy and sharp? Definitely. The long, pointy ones are sometimes toxic and are for self-defence. Then there are the shorter spines that help the urchin walk and protect itself. Then there are these pincer ones with a kind of claw at the end, which the urchin uses for removing things from its body, like this green algae globule. Well, that's all very exciting and interesting, Jen, but what's this got to do with eating? I'm just getting to that part. Look at this. Are those teeth? Yep. And more importantly, where are they? Underneath the urchin in this strange mouth. It's in the centre of its body and has five teeth. But they're like human teeth on a sea urchin. How? Well, they're there to allow the urchin to scrape algae off rocks as they're moving. Oh, so they kind of nosh on the move. No wonder they move so slowly, they're picking out en route. Their weird human-like teeth are sharp tools to help them nosh on the algae to their heart's content. Just like the harlequin shrimp uses his sharp legs. So the harlequin shrimp and sea urchin both use their sharp implements to cut, scrape and gobble up their food. Like having your own inbuilt knives and forks. <laughs> Now, what is this? The fish with human mouth show? Look, seriously, he's got a mouth like a person. <laughs> You're right. He has a human mouth, but he does need a good checkup. Although those bottom mashes look super sharp. All the better to eat sand with. Yeah, this is the Titan Triggerfish. Hello. He does look like he's eating sand, but if you look again, he's actually flapping his fins super speedily to fluff away the sand. He's on the search for any tasty worms or morsels hiding away. And now he's eating rock? Well, that's called coral rubble, and he's not eating it, although he might accidentally swallow the odd pebble or two. <laughs> he's using his mighty mouth to move bits of rubble to look for more food. <laughs> no wonder Jaws had so many fishy friends hanging around. Well, they're hanging around for any crumbs that he may leave behind. But after a hard day's work, it's nice for the toothy trigger fish to curl up next to this cleaner shrimp, who might even give his pearly whites a once-over while he sleeps. So our toothy triggerfish is linked to our strangely toothy sea urchin as both have weird human-like mouths and teeth. So teeth is our connection between the urchin and titan triggerfish. Who else is linked to our unique urchin? Ah, oh, yeah. Nice chilled music, Jen. Perfect for this island vibe, I must say. But these guys in the water here are a little too chilled. They look like balls of weed. Are they alive? Smack!
I'm sorry, what? You're looking at a smack. <laughs> right, yes. You may want to elaborate on that. These guys are upside down jellyfish, known together as a smack of jellyfish. Jellyfish? Are you sure? They look like sea plants or even little anemones. Yep, not all jellyfish are deadly killers, like the box jellyfish. Although these guys do have a little trick up their tentacles. They can release stinging cells into the water so they can sting you without touching you. Wow, like their own stinging ray gun. They're not deadly like the box jelly, but they are as greedy and they're sun worshippers like our coral. Ah, so I bet they have the infamous zoosanthellies hiding somewhere. Ah, yeah, they have zoos in their tentacles, who, as you know, help to transform sunlight into sugar through the sun's rays. This is why they live upside down and in shallow water, so they can get maximum sun time. So they just sit there and bask in the sun and eat at the same time. They don't even have to move. What a nice life. Yep, smack. Quite an aggressive name for such a chilled group of animals. So the sea urchin and upside down jellyfish are linked because they both get energy from algae through the zoos. And the upside down jellyfish also connects right back to our first scoffer, the coral, through their mutual friend, the zoosanthelly. What a banquet these ocean dudes have. Oh, they sure do. Let's go for one final reef cap of our ocean noshes. <laughs> We started with the sun-loving corals and their friends, the zooxanthellae. Hey, at last. <laughs> yeah, I knew it all along. I was just saving it. The greedy corals link to giant clams. Big shell, big appetite, as they filter plankton again with the help of the zooxanthellae. And plankton is our plat de jour. Plat de what? Dish of the day. Oh, OK, I don't want it. The mantas also munch on it, despite their huge mouths, just like the gargantuan whale shark. From the largest mouths to the smallest, with the coral-guzzling butterfly fish. And plankton is also on the menu for our plankton-eating tuna. No, I don't want no no. Who eat in schools, just like the fairy basslets. Oh. Great name and supreme suction power. But for the best in show, it has to be the mackerel and bait ball gang, all dining at the same restaurant using their wall of mouths, like the fairy basslets. Who were also linked to the remarkable rhinopius. Looks like a rhino, sucks like a vacuum cleaner. Mm -hmm. Talking about super suction, what about the stealthy stonefish? One gulp and his dinner has disappeared. At least it's a quick death for the poor fish, unlike this poor fella who has been sucked up by the sly, oh, silent no. box jellyfish. Well, it could be worse. Imagine being eaten by a bottom mouth. The pretty anemone seems to have a bottomless gut. For pure greed, no one beats the harlequin shrimp. Pretty in pink, but he can eat for Australia. And nothing can beat the creepy central mouth of the sea urchin. Which has proper teeth, like a human and the toothy titan triggerfish, chomping on the rocks to nosh algae is no problem for this geezer. Doesn't do anything for me, but our upside-down jellyfish also has a taste for algae, but basks in the sun and waits for the zooxanthellae to turn sunlight into something more tasty. Ooh, which links to our first greedy guts, the coral. I can't eat any more. What a feast. Our ocean chompers know how to dine in style, don't they? Yeah, they do. Which reminds me, it's your turn to wash up. <laughs> <laughs>